Hello and welcome back to my creating room. My name is Brooke Shaden. I'm a fine art photographer and we are diving into Photoshop today to uncover how I've created some of my images. And today is a really fun image because I actually made this picture from everyday things that you would find around your house. One of the most important ones being a toolbox. So let's talk about how you can create surreal atmospheric images out of everyday objects just like we did here. So to show you, let's jump into Photoshop and you can see all the layers that I have here. I'm going all the way down to the bottom so that I can show you how this image started. Which was this, just a toolbox. I put a white bed sheet behind so that it would have sort of the same tonality as the sky that I would end up putting in later. And I photographed this toolbox at many different angles with my camera up higher, right level with it, down lower, because I wasn't sure how this would look in the end. I also thought, hmm, it looks a bit like a toolbox. So I would have to go through steps later to get rid of all of the edging and the little areas that looked toolboxy. And then the other problem was that because I was shooting so close up to this image, this toolbox, I had the issue of the background being very out of focus, a really shallow depth of field. And I didn't want that because the further you are from something, say a mountain or a cliff edge, the more in focus it's going to be. So I had to shoot with a higher f-stop for this image than I normally would. I'm really kind of like a 2.8 kind of girl, but I had to shoot much higher for this image. So I got my base image. And here you see some of that process of getting rid of the parts that look toolboxy. So I got rid of the lines, the seams in it, and I also extended the box out to the right because it was missing there and I felt that it shouldn't be cut off. So here we have something funny that happens in editing, which is premature shadowing. Because when you're editing, of course, things don't always go in this order. You put the person in, then you make the shadows. In this case, I edited my subject into the picture, and then the shadows had to come below the layer of my subject. So that's why you see these shadows coming in first in relation to the rest of the image. Here we have the sky, in air quotes. Um, because it's not really a sky, I just painted a specific color all over and that color was actually sampled from the background of this original image. So that became the fog layer that I put in. And then we've got our subject. You see how that little, the little shadows start to make sense there? And that's because that's how it was edited. They came in just a little bit later than our subject just adjusting my subject so that she looks like she was in the same lighting in the same situation. Adding some shading to make her believable. And then I'm brightening up everything, the box as well, because if the background is so light, then it stands to reason that everything should have a lighter edge to it. All right, so we've got our subject mostly in. There's the other shoe. The other shoe just dropped, ah, sorry. And I'm making everything brighter again for this step where I'm adding in this fog smoke layer. And so this was actually uh, an image of just a smoke emitter going off on a backdrop. And I edited that in by using an overlay. So if I click on layer five, you can see that that smoke was added in using blending mode multiply, and that allowed the smoke to sit nicely in the background. Here we've got even more, so it's just a second smoke layer, just a bit lighter, added in again using multiply. And now I'm really working on the lighting, the shading of this image, and so you can see, particularly in how the adjustment layers, how their layer masks are created, we've got these really big areas of separation of white and black here on the, on the masks. And that's because wherever it's white on the mask, that's where the light was added in. So you can see here that the light is just being added through this region, and that's what the mask is doing. Just manipulating the light. Where does the light go? Where do I need it to go for believability? These are my texture layers. They were added both with soft light, brightening up, adding contrast. And you know, this is a really important step here 
in, I say that because these four little tiny curve layers make a big difference with how we see the image. So we've got these, these sort of layers that draw your eye right through diagonal across the frame. And that's really important, especially when you're starting from scratch in an image and you don't really have a template, there isn't already light there, it's just kind of blank. It's important to have a direction of light to let the eye flow through the frame in some sort of natural, organic way. And so that's what I'm doing here. And the final layers, there. And that's how we finish. The important thing to me when I created this image was not necessarily how am I going to do it or, you know, like, will this look like a toolbox? Although that was a huge concern, obviously. I don't want it to look like a toolbox. I wanted it to have sort of a surreal, futuristic feel. But particularly, I titled this image Limitless. And I really wanted the viewer to look at this and feel that way, that you weren't sure if she was going to fall or if she was going to fly or if she was just gonna hover there. And I wanted there to be a real sense of not being sure about this woman's future and what's about to happen to her because I love to create on that crux, that moment of where you're really unsure about the future, where you don't know what's about to come next. That's the exciting part of creating for me. And if I'm able to do that with a toolbox in my own house with myself and that's it, that's amazing. So I hope you enjoyed this edit. Leave a comment if you did. Let me know what you wanna see in the future, if you have any ideas of images that you would like me to cover. Thank you so much for watching.